Hello, friends. This is Darren Hayes of PigskinDispatch.com. Before we take you to your favorite Sports History Network show, just want to tell you a little bit about some merch that you can pick up that represents your favorite SHN podcast. So far, there's t-shirts, coffee mugs, and even books from some, some of the authors that do podcasts right here on SHN. Who could buy something better than that than have the history right from the, the gentleman that you hear talking about it? But we also are adding things each and every day. And where's that store, may you ask? Well, it's at SportsHistoryNetwork.com. Up at the top, there is the SHN. HN merch button. Click on that. It'll take you right to the store and you can be representing your favorite podcast and show the world that, hey, on the swag that I'm using, it's the headquarters of sports yesteryear, Sports History Network, and my favorite podcaster, the Sports History Network store. Shop there today. This podcast is part of the Sports History Network, your headquarters for the yesteryear of your favorite sport. You can learn more at sportshistorynetwork.com. Hello, sports fans, and welcome to another edition of Yesterday Sports on the Sports History Network. And you can also listen to my weightlifting podcasts on No Nonsense, Old School Weightlifting History. Today, we'll have Part 5, The Weightlifting Career of an Average Joe. I competed in March of 1988, but didn't do well snatching 95 kilos and clean and jerking 132 and a half kilos. There would be no American championships for me. My body was telling me to stop, but my mind couldn't accept it. In spite of the painful tendonitis in my knees, I went back to the gym and trained harder than I had ever trained before. I willed my body to lift more weight, and my body responded. I was doing squats with 415 pounds for five reps. I got my front squat up to 405 pounds. I split jerked 150 kilos, 330 pounds from the squat rack, and cleaned a full clean of 145 kilos, 319 pounds. I snatched 105 kilos, 231 pounds from the floor, and 107 and a half kilos, 237 pounds from the hang position just above the knees. I competed in May and had the best meet of my career. I weighed in at 179 pounds, I opened with 97.5, that's 215 pounds in the snatch, and made a solid lift. I took 102 and a half kilos for my second and missed it out front. I made 102 and a half on my third attempt, but it wasn't easy. It was out front again, and I had to chase it, almost running off the lifting platform. In the clean and jerk, I open with 135 kilos, 297 pounds, and made it. I took 140 kilos, 308 pounds from my second attempt, and cleaned it without too much difficulty. But my left knee was on fire, and I missed the jerk out front. Only one lift left to go. I was determined to fight back the pain and make this a successful lift. I cleaned it and once again pushed the jerk out front, but I recovered quickly and got it overhead for three white lights from the judges. The 140 kilo clean and jerk ranked me 35th out of 266 lifters in my weight class in 1988. My 242 and a half kilo total ranked me 46th out of 266 lifters. I was happy with my results, but I knew my time as a competitive Olympic lifter was running out. I took a week off from training and competed again only seven days later. I snatched 97 and a half kilos clean and jerk 135 kilos. I took a break from competing for nine months to allow my body to heal. I continued to train, but I had to lower the intensity 
or wrist surgery to my knee and shoulder. In February 1989, I competed in the 90 kilo weight class, weighing in at 190 pounds. I snatched 97 and a half kilos, that's 215 pounds. I clean and jerked 127 and a half kilos, that's 281 pounds. That was a fairly big decrease from what I had done nine months earlier. Knowing I could not train as intensely as I once had, which would result in my lifts decreasing, I began to lose motivation. I decided to try one last competition in July at the Garden State Games. I made only one out of six lifts and retired from competition at only 27 years old. I never achieved my ultimate goal of competing in the American Championships, falling 12 and a half kilos or 27 pounds short of the qualifying total. But I was proud of what I had accomplished. Most of what I'd accomplished was through sheer willpower and the grace of God. I'm bow-legged, I have sloped shoulders, and I have poor upper body flexibility. The tendonitis I had on my knees was a terrible detriment. Would I do it all again? In a heartbeat. For the next 22 years, I continued weightlifting. I could never match the heavy weights I had lifted in the past and I had to make a lot of changes in my training program. Eventually, the tendonitis in my knee subsided, and I learned to train smarter. I made a few comeback attempts to compete again, but I couldn't accept not being able to lift as much as I used to, and I would eventually lose motivation. In 2010, my 17-year-old son expressed an interest in weightlifting. I taught him how to do the Olympic lifts and coached him in several meets. We started training together and my motivation and enthusiasm increased. The next thing I knew, I was squatting 400 pounds, something I hadn't done since I stopped competing 22 years earlier. One day, I was reading the local town newspaper and saw an ad for an upcoming powerlifting contest. It was called the Mighty Christian Powerlifting Contest, and it was an unsanctioned meet about three miles from my home. I never had much interest in powerlifting, and all through my years of competing in Olympic lifting, I had never done deadlifts and rarely did bench presses. But I knew I could squat some pretty big weights, so I thought, why not give this a try? What have I got to lose? In all my years of competing in Olympic lifting, I had trouble gaining weight. But now, at 49 years old, I was having the opposite problem. At this contest, I weighed in at 220 pounds. I made my opening squat attempt with 405 pounds. I asked for 415 pounds for my second attempt and took a seat while the loaders got the bar ready. But as I looked up, I saw them stripping the bar down to 135 pounds. I ran over there and said, wait, what are you doing? I asked for 415 pounds. Why are you lowering the weight to 135? They explained to me that after everyone takes their first attempt, we strip the bar and start the second attempts. I was completely thrown off by this because this is not the way we do it in Olympic lifting. In Olympic lifting, they just keep increasing the weight. This way, no one has to wait an extremely long time in between their attempts. So, needless to say, I had to wait a long time before the weight got to 415 pounds. I had to do my warm-up session all over again but I managed to have a successful second attempt. 
After another long wait, I succeeded on my third attempt with 425 pounds. Next came the bench press, a lift I had little interest in and hadn't trained that hard for. I made my opener with 215 pounds and then missed 260 twice. In the deadlift, I opened with an easy 425 pounds. I then made 440 on my second attempt and 450 on my third attempt. I walked out of there feeling pretty satisfied. It felt good to compete again and I thought maybe I'll do this again. In December, I competed in Holbrook, Long Island. All the heavy lifting caused me to gain weight and I weighed in at 228 pounds. I squatted 420 pounds on my second attempt, but I started to feel some pain in my knee, so I played it smart and passed on my third attempt. I benched 205 pounds and missed 260. I deadlifted 465 pounds on my second attempt and had 475 pounds locked out on my third attempt, but I lost my grip and dropped the bar. I had increased my total from eight months earlier by 15 pounds, so I was happy. In March of 2012, I competed in East Rutherford, New Jersey. This contest would be a little different because I was doing deadlift only, or at least that was the plan. I weighed in at 220 pounds and made all three attempts, finishing with a 480 pound deadlift. But there was another contest immediately following the deadlifts. The objective was to squat your body weight for as many reps as you could in 90 seconds. I was 17 days away from my 50th birthday and I wasn't planning on taking part in this, but the challenge was too tempting to pass up. I had the advantage of being the last lifter to go. The guy who was currently in first place did 24 reps, so I needed to do 25. Although high reps were not my thing, this was only 220 pounds, so I figured I could knock out 25 reps without too much trouble. The mistake I made was that I was too concerned about the timer. I banged out 15 reps as fast as lightning, but then I started to struggle, not because it started to feel heavy, but because I wasn't used to high reps, and I was simply running out of gas. By the time I got to 20 reps, I was gasping for air. The crowd started cheering me on, and that really helped. I barely made it to 25, but by the grace of God, I finished and won first place. I promised myself I would never do that again. Okay, that will conclude part five of the weightlifting career of an average Joe. I hope you enjoyed it. Take care and God bless. This podcast is part of the Sports History Network, your headquarters for the yesteryear of your favorite sport. You can learn more at sportshistorynetwork.com. Hey there, Sports History fan. This is Arnie Chapman, a.k.a. the Football History Dude, and I wanted to thank you for stopping by to listen to another episode here on the Sports History Network. Our podcasters are passionate about uncovering and sharing sports stories from yesteryear. And if you didn't know it already, we have over 30 shows across the network covering all sorts of sports history topics. In fact, here's a glimpse into one of our awesome podcasts here on the network. Hello, football friends. This is Darren Hayes of the Pigskin Dispatch Podcast, and I'd like to invite you to the portal of positive football history, Pigskin Dispatch and PigskinDispatch.com. We talk about everything that centers around the game of American football, expert discussions, the origins of the games, the great players, teams, and coaches, and more, and some great guests and insights from experts. We have new episodes three to four times a week, and you can find us on SportsHistoryNetwork.com, PigskinDispatch.com, or your favorite podcast provider. 
How about that? I bet you're super hyped to go listen to that new podcast, right? Well, to learn about this show and all the other podcasts on the network, head over to sportshistorynetwork.com forward slash podcast. Again, that's sportshistorynetwork.com forward slash podcast. Head over there today to find your next favorite sports history podcast.